Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you the easiest method for building really good house songs. So in this video I'm going to show you how to start a house song and build one from scratch. So this will be a nice track build video, I haven't done one in a while, so I'm excited for this. Let's go ahead and get into it. My favorite way to start a song is to start with a pre-recorded acapella. The acapella I have here is from splice.com. Now if you don't have splice, I do have vocal kits on my website. Just don't want to use those vocal kits because I've used them in like every video so far. So I want to start with something new and fresh. Vocal I have sounds like this. Barely gone, feel you drawing close to the scene. I can't be lonely when I'm not alone. Missing myself when there ain't no one home. Best part about building around vocals is that the arrangement's already done because the vocals are already structured. So all, all we have to do is make a set of chords that harmonizes with these vocals. So I'm gonna make a new instance of X for serum here and a four bar loop for a set of chords. We're gonna go ahead and make one of the greatest sounds in the world. I'm gonna initialize the preset. We're going to use a sawtooth sound wave, turn on the filter, tighten it up a bit, grab envelope two, pull it down, I'm going to turn the sustain down here and then open this decay. Not there yet. I'm going to open the decay more. We're going to add vibrato during the sound. Our vocals are in G minor. So I'm going to take a G chord, an F, and then a D sharp. Then I'm going to take these notes put them up an octave, make a fifth, and then add the third. These are supposed to be major chords. And then I'm gonna add some extra notes and revoice these a little bit, just to take them out of their basic form. So when I was rehearsing the video, I actually liked the synth I made earlier. Made it the same way, but it came out different because that is sound design. Barely gone, feel you drawing. That one is way prettier. Isn't that funny? I did the same thing and got a different sound. I'm just gonna lay this out to match the vocal. Let's check the chorus. I can't be lonely when I'm not alone. Missing myself when there ain't no one home. So now I have a set of chords that works with this vocal. Let's keep adding material. I'm gonna add a drum beat. All right, so I have a uh, tech house kit. We have a kick, clap, closed hi-hat, shaker, open hat. I'm gonna do a four on the floor beat. I'm gonna put the clap on every other kick. We're gonna put our closed hi-hat in the middle of each kick. I'm gonna put our shaker on 16th notes. And then I'm gonna cover each kick with an open hi-hat. Just help, it just helps to add noise and then layer each clap. So I'm gonna keep adding material here. And for some reason, I'm getting like a, a classic trance vibe. So I wanna match that vibe and make some cool trance gates. So watch this, this is really cool sound design. I guarantee you'll love this. I'm gonna take the chords and duplicate them onto a new instrument. I'm gonna grab Serum. And then for the oscillator, I'm just gonna make a square. I'm telling you, this is gonna be really cool. And then I'm gonna turn the filter on. And just open it to that much. And I'm gonna turn the arpeggiator on and let's do a 16th note trigger, but we're gonna trigger chords. Make sure the note length is 99%. Now we're gonna do eighth notes. So you get a little bit of that pulsing, but here's where things get weird. I'm gonna EQ the low end out of it like that because we don't need the low end here. We're gonna have a bass line. And then I'm gonna turn on some reverb. And we're gonna get a mess of reverb by turning this to 100% and the decay on four seconds. You can use any reverb you want. I like Valhalla Vintage Verb. It tends to be a little bit heavier than other reverbs out there. And I'm gonna duck this at four on the floor. And then here's where the magic happens. We're gonna get another LFO tool. I like to use ShaperBox 3, but you can use any LFO tool that you want. I'm just going to make a new curve here. I'm gonna trigger this at a rate of 16 notes per bar. Yeah, that's a nice transcape, but I'm gonna make it a smoother effect doing something like this. Something like this will be more on rhythm than what you just heard. And so if we play this back with our chords, 
I'm gonna layer this trance gate with another airy instrument. I have a really good one from Arturia Pigments here. It's really nice. I'm gonna get rid of all the notes though. I don't like to clutter my chord notes too much. So I'm just going to make a nice little harmony. But I'm gonna do the same thing with this one and that's add that 16th note gate. Now I'm going to make a bass line. Now we have options for bass. This is one of the most critical skills any house producer could have, and that is picking the right bass line. All of the energy in house music sits in the bass line and the kick. So you got to do it right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give us two options and we'll pick the best one. First option is to grab the bottom mm -hmm. note of your chords and then just paste it onto a synth layer i'm going to initialize preset here so i'm going to turn on the sub oscillator for that sub bass and we can barely hear it i'm going to go down an octave that sounds good i'm going to go to distortion and diode and then turn the post thing off and we'll give us a nice big sub bass we'll add some ducking to this sound with kickstart because this is house music, everything has to move around the kick. The breaks, call me someone else's name. Now that works, but it's never that exciting to have bass like this. The only way you could have this type of bass be exciting in a house song is if your lead is really good or if your song is really mellow. And I'm not feeling the mellow vibes, so I'm gonna go take another shot at a bass line, pull this down onto a new preset. This preset is a plucked bass. I'm gonna take the same notes, but we're gonna do something a little bit more exciting than this first one. And then we're... Now we have to make the drop. I could do a mellow drop to get something deep housey. I could do something kind of exciting or I could do something really exciting, like almost future housey. So to start this drop, I'm gonna do what I call stretching the vocal. When you have an acapella and you don't have control of the recording, so I can't just ask this vocalist to record another piece of vocal for me because I don't know who she is. I have to stretch the vocal. Or in other words, take pieces of this vocal and make another lead that I could use for the drop. I'm gonna do that right now. I can't be lonely when I'm not alone. Here, and I'm just gonna make some kind of vocal chop melody. Not not alone. <laughs> that that'll work. That'll work. I'm gonna take the drums and pull them over. You're probably like, where is he going with this? I'm gonna put these onto their own layer so that I could duck them. Let's grab both bass lines because we don't know which one we're gonna use yet. We could use this one. Or we could use this one. If we use that one, we would have to use chords probably. So like all of this chord information. But that's not that exciting, is it? I have an idea. We're gonna take this lead and drop it on to its, its own track. I'm gonna add thermal to this layer. I'm gonna look for something wide. Usually in drops, you have a wide lead. Not all the time, but most of the time. That adds a little bit. Now that sounds like a mess, but that's okay because I had this idea, remember? We're gonna add that same 16th filter to this vocal. This is going to get psychedelic in a second. And we have these trance gates that have the same filter. Now if we go from the hook to the drop.
that's cool but we can make it a little bit more chaotic i'm gonna get rid of these chords i'm gonna go down to our bass here and whenever you follow a lead pattern that's gating like that with a gated bass you just get the most ridiculous result so now we have that pulsing bass line and all together you just get energy Isn't that wild? So here we are developing the drop. And whenever I'm developing the drop, I try to finish my buildup because my buildup is the thing that will tell me how good my drop is. So I went ahead and added some simple buildup effects just to enhance everything. And now we're sitting on something that sounds like this. And that's exciting, but we could try this a couple different ways. So I'm gonna save this stutter version and let's do a little bit more of a mellow version with the other bass line we had. That sounds pretty good with the stutter, but if we try it without the stutter, I'm also gonna get rid of that wide layer just to make this more mellow. I'll get rid of the gates on these chords and we'll save them for later in the drop. And listen to this, this one has a really nice energy too. I love that one. Let me know in the comments which of these drops you guys liked the best. I think I like this one more, but that's a video for you guys. If you like some more uncut track builds, I have those in my EDM bootcamp course. My EDM bootcamp course for a limited time comes with access to my inner circle where you can receive track feedback from me and also the other students in the course as well. If that sounds interesting to you, check the link out in the description below this video, and I will see you guys in the next video lesson.